Hello, and we are live from. Uh, do you recognize that building? Yes, this is, of course, La Torre del Oro, the uh, Golden Tower. Uh, and I thought I'd stop before getting to the hotel because it was it'd be a great, great opportunity to share with you some of the thoughts uh, that have come from the game. The first one has to be uh, how happy were the fans of England that I spoke to on the way to here, and it's logical as well. Uh, they were they were cautiously happy. I must say, uh, not just because of the second half performance, but uh, just the fact that you know they think they've been, they've been here before, and they were like, you know, I follow England everywhere, and, and it was great, but you know we have to build from this, and, and I think we haven't seen this before from England. The fact that uh, uh, there is a there is a context to the win, there's something that's been built, and I think Gareth Southgate and England needed uh, a victory like this, one that actually says. Look, uh, what we are doing, which is first the idea and then find the players that suit the idea, players that have been chosen because of their intelligence and their tactical ability and technical ability as well, tactical flexibility even, uh, all that, uh, it's, it needed a victory like this. In the past, not so long ago, um, people used to say, how can we put all these talented players together? Uh, you know, the Lampards and Gerrards, etc. Uh, now, nobody was missed. Uh, John Stones was not missed, Henderson was not missed, and uh, yeah, it was a game of two halves, and, uh, and certainly, you know, England was superb in the first half, not so good in the second half, and I will accept uh, that you will disagree with me, as, uh, as Ryan Mason has done on Twitter, and I, I accept that. And, and sometimes you react to what you see straight away from the game, is not necessarily perhaps the, the best reaction or, or, or the one that you will agree with, but that's what I felt and still feel, that uh, England were absolutely superb in the first half. Superb. They had a plan, uh, which was to make sure that they beat the, line, the, the, the pressure of Spain that was suspected but was clumsy by uh, playing it long when necessary, but a clever long pass, say the two pick four passes to Kane was superb. Kane was brilliant. So was pick four at the point. And uh, and then, you know, making sure that uh, the three men up front, uh, Kent could hold the ball, but the other two, Rashford and Sterling, could actually use the pace against the full-backs of Spain that were either um, too forward or not fast enough uh, to beat that uh, that fast England. They were effective. England were effective. Three shots on target in the whole game. Three goals. Five shots on goal uh, and out of which three goals so you have to give it to to England uh, there was a plan they were effective uh, they they defended well when they had to uh, the pressure was they meant that pressure and it, and it was effective in the first half and more more importantly uh, England have gone from having one midfielder in the uh, in the World Cup Henderson uh, the others were not midfielders to now have three with Wings and Barkley, uh, they they proven, shown that you need midfielders to actually get the best of the best England players, which are the forwards. So they left no space at all in um, in between the lines, which is when Spain does damage. Uh, that forced Spain to be a little bit too direct, ball quickly to the to the box from wide areas, but not via the midfield or not via the. Uh, the, the players behind the strikers, those number tens of quality. Uh, there was not not much from Thiago who had to defend too, uh, sorry, to attack too deep or get the ball too deep because England left no spaces whatsoever. Uh, not much from Saul either. Um, and England kept their defence and the spacing behind. Uh, they were very alerted, so there was not much that Rodrigo could do from behind or running behind or Aspas either. So all in all, it was a the perfect performance in the first half and the three goals were very very deserved 17 passes before the third goal it was brilliant it was really really enjoyable because you know that that's what Gareth Southgate wants to do a team that's flexible that understands what what happens in the game and reacts to it well so all that was superb uh, as I said Spain they were a little bit complacent it felt like uh, you know uh, it just 
there was so many accolades to Spain in the last uh, few days that uh, perhaps the players believe in it, and they liked it. We say they liked each other too much when you start passing the ball and not really uh, meaning uh, intent like we saw against Croatia or against England in Wembley. Forget Wales. I think what happens with Wales had to do more with Wales than with Spain. So, um, so yeah, that's that's what happened in the first half. And then uh, Luis Enrique said that he uh, he was actually quite good at half time, even though it was bad for him to say, because he could have killed everybody. But instead, he said, "Look, uh, to be a top side, you have to suffer sometimes, and you have to suffer uh, to win sometimes." Then, in the second half, and this is where I agree, but I disagree with most people. With Terry Butcher, I did disagree uh, on Five Live, with Ryan Mason on Twitter. I thought England were not great in the second half. Now, uh, I said poor even. Then I spoke to Harry Wings and uh, Trippier, and they said, "Well, you know, when you are three in the lab." It's uh, and then goes three one. You're almost like forced to uh, psychologically. You, you you start dropping deeper and deeper. I, I thought England could have been braver with the ball, tried to keep it for a bit longer. Uh, they couldn't pass the ball for long enough, and that of course meant that Spain grew into the game uh, with the help of um, of the Benito Villamarín and the and the fans from from this wonderful city of Sevilla. Um, Luis Enrique didn't look for excuses, but he said if that penalty had been given, the third goal would have been scored by the stadium. And he probably was right. Maybe it would have happened because there was plenty of time for that. And that's why I'm saying that England were, were poor because uh, we are now looking at the result and thinking great result, but uh, Spain scored twice, hit the balls once, and in my eyes, it was a penalty and sending off for uh, uh, Pickford uh, that could have changed matters. Some say it could have been a penalty and a yellow. Okay, whatever. But still, it would have turned things around. But you have to be lucky sometimes as well, uh, especially when you defend deep and give possession to the rival. You have to have a little bit of luck to actually get the, uh, the three points as England got. So, all in all, a great night for England. You have to build from there, of course, and, uh, and take it from there. And for Spain, uh, an alert uh, sign one that says, you know, the day you forget to do the things that make you good, anybody can beat you. That's it. I'll leave you here. Uh, I'm going to back to the hotel. I see that it's noise over there. If um, a bar is open, I might just stop for one and keep talking about football. For now, see you later and good night. Now, I always have the same problem. How do I turn this off? All right, let's try it this way. Ah, it's going. Bye.